I remember I, um, you were telling me that you you were um, you were trained by Brody. You were brought up by Brody. Well, I would say I was really trained by Brody, but he was really a, instrumental in my career. I learned a lot of stuff from Bruiser Brody, probably the greatest big man ever in professional wrestling. You know, he had that big long hair. Just a few basic things that you you learn in professional wrestling, like as a heel, when you're beating somebody up and you throw them out of the ring. If you throw them out of this side of the ring, don't get out on the same side of the guy you threw out get out on the opposite side and walk around as you're walking around you're storming around going to get him the whole crowd is like look out look out here he comes here he comes little stuff like that that really perfects me to wrestle a little critiquing stuff also Brody always told me years ago he says if you carry something to the ring carry something you can use forget those feathered boas and sequin robes grab something and big bruiser always used to carry that chain so I've been carrying a two by four ever since because you never know when one of these young guys might get out of hand you might have to whack him but uh, Brody was instrumental and I was telling you earlier he was hard with the office personnel because we're a labor management type thing uh, wrestlers that are labor the office is the management of course and he was having trouble with a promoter down in Texas and so what Brody did I was working with him at a main event at the Hemisphere Arena in San Antonio we had probably 12, 14,000 people at the arena. The show went real good. I went out there. Brody sat down on his butt. I grabbed him in a headlock, and for 20 minutes, we sat in a headlock. The worst match you'd ever want to see. The crowd was booing, throwing stuff in the ring. But from then on, Brody always got his money because they could make him go to the ring, but they couldn't make him wrestle. Yeah. Now, of course, I always refer to Bruiser Brody as the original hardcore uh, guy before hardcore was even introduced right. into wrestling. I mean, I mean that guy. I remember his legendary matches with Abdullah the Butcher, bloody yeah. matches. I mean, bloody matches. No. And him and Stan Hansen had some big matches too. And Stan was a good friend of mine. And those guys were buddies. Yeah. So, so, so basically, I, I, you know, I, I've seen you in the ring. You know, you, you have this. You know, the, you had this stomp and and, and the you know and, and just you know just the, the, the growl. I mean, I, didn't you get that from Brody a bit? Well, a lot of mannerisms from Brody. I wouldn't say that. You know, I studied Brody, but I, I learned to be comfortable with my own character in the ring with with Brody. And I and I, you know, a lot of his stuff, I, I wouldn't imitate, but I kind of took my own uh, uh, tent on, like. Uh, the barbarian. Remember John Nord, the barbarian. He was he was doing the whole Brody deal. I didn't, you know, of course, because I was working with Brody. I was still working. Bro Bruiser was still alive. God bless him. Uh, when uh, Nash or not Nash, uh, Nord was doing it. Bruiser was already gone. Well, well, you know, uh, any final thoughts on Brody? Um, yeah. Well, Brody also, yeah, he was, like I said, he, he was good for the talent because, especially as a young guy breaking into business, he would take no guff from the promoter. I remember Jim Crockett was saying, everybody that comes to the Omni in, a, or in Atlanta, Georgia, they better be in a sport coat and tie. Well, of course, you know, no, you know, all a bunch of wrestlers, we're all on the road all the time. Who's got a chance? So we're all sitting around. All of a sudden, you hear the crowd pop and yell. Here comes Brody from the front door. He's got on a teeny tiny sport coat you could hardly get on threw his bag in the ring, climbed in the ring, climbed out the other side and went to the dressing room that way. Brody would make an entrance wherever he went. Uh, the, yeah. One of the greatest wrestlers uh, yeah. ever. I remember talking to a, a Hawk from the Road Warriors yesterday about, uh, about Brody and, and the mysterious uh, way in, in, in the way he died. And he really went off on the promoters over there in, in Puerto Rico. Well, he, went on, he was bruiser. Now, also you got to look at the man. You know, he was an imposing person. He was a huge guy. He was rough with people. He'd beat people up in the ring. If guys didn't like what he did in the ring, he would just beat them up. What are you going to do if you get beat up in the ring? You know, you can't call a cop. So Brody was kind of a bully, but he was on his own way. And uh, I don't know what actually happened in Puerto Rico. And no, no one should ever be killed in, the, in, the, in this business like that. It was, uh, you know, but I, I can see the, the, uh, the gentleman uh, that, that was in the incident with him was probably afraid of Brody also, but uh, to carry a knife into a dressing room, or into a locker room, hidden inside a towel, it's a whole other thing. And I'll, personally, ever since then, I promised I'd never go work to Puerto Rico, and I've never been there. Road Warriors say the same thing. Yeah, never go down there. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks. My pleasure, guys. Yeah. And brews up here for you, baby. Here's a hole for you, tough guy. Ho! -ho!